I got a brand new laptop with an age-old problem. It's overheating terribly. Just seconds after launching a game, this machine's processor exceeds 100 deca and the graphics card goes over 90 deca. I don't even want to run any stress tests because it's more than certain that the device will fail. Again, why again? I'll talk about that in this service video. But it won't just be talk, because I have with me the Honeywell Phase Change Thermal Material 7950 Phase Change Thermal Pad, and I'll show you how to fix this kind of fault, which the laptop picked up at the official Lenovo Service Center. Oh, that's embarrassing. I'm Pavel, and you're watching TechManiac HD. Welcome. As you probably know, the Legion 5 laptops are very popular and often recommended laptops aimed at gamers. Mainly because these models are attractively priced, at least in terms of hardware configuration. They also look pretty good. It's a shame that many reviews conduct thermal tests unprofessionally, even though these tests show the true capabilities and limits of cooling systems. You'll always find things like that in my content, so it's worth subscribing. But today, I won't be reviewing this model. It's enough to say that after about 50 hours of gaming since purchase, the RTX 3060 graphics card got fried. The owner sent it in for warranty service and the manufacturer replaced the motherboard. Once everything's soldered to the board, it's clear replacing the entire thing is easiest, but that's already a major expense. When the device came back from service, the owner turned on a game to check it and the temperatures quickly shot up to dangerously high levels, but fortunately, he reacted quickly and fearing the device might get damaged again, he turned the game off. Reddit is filled with threads of unhappy Legion owners criticizing Lenovo's service, which only worsened their experience. The owner of the unlucky device suspects that the cause of the problem might be poorly applied thermal paste or even a complete lack of thermal pads. Just to be clear, I advised him to contact the service center again. After all, there is a warranty and it also covers this kind of defect, especially if the repair was done improperly. However, completely deprived of any hope and disappointed by the lack of professionalism from the service center, the laptop owner contacted me. It turns out that the official service center did not live up to the task. Anyway, judging by the number of posts on Reddit, this is probably not the first or last time, so it's no wonder the owner prefers to pay out of his own pocket for service from a Polish YouTuber living in Ireland, rather than rely once again on the mercy or lack thereof from Lenovo. Let's start disassembling the device by removing the 10 screws with a Phillips screwdriver. The four front screws on the device are noticeably shorter. The entire cover is also held in place by clips, and to release it, we usually pry it open with a thin piece of plastic. Prying with a screwdriver or another metal tool can not only damage the plastic or break the clips, but you could also pull out a wire or, even worse, damage a printed circuit board trace or one of the components. You could also cause a short circuit this way. That's why a plastic spudger is highly recommended, although in this case I couldn't find a suitable spot to start prying at all, and since I had a suction cup on hand, I decided to use that instead. It allowed me to neatly separate those two parts. If you need similar tools, they were included with the blue mat. Everything cost a dozen or so zlotis, so if you need anything, you'll find the links in the description as well. Before you touch anything, disconnect the battery connector, either with your fingernail or with any plastic tool again. It's a simple task, but really be careful and take your time with it. Remember not to pull on the cables. The connector has special spots on its sides for prying it up. Use them. Now let's use our brains, especially if the inside of your laptop looks a bit different from the one I have in front of me. It looks like in this version of the Legion, you need to unscrew the fans first before lifting the heat sink along with the heat pipes. So first, I disconnect their power, and even though with such small connectors it's really tempting to just pull on the cables, of course we don't do that. If your fingers are too thick or your nails are too short, then use plastic tools again. Tweezers or small pliers can be a lifesaver here, but personally I try to avoid using metal tools. Of course, wherever possible, before unscrewing the fans, we check if nothing is in our way and... Well, of course, that's right. So I unscrew the cover, under which there's an additional M2 port and the battery that powers the basic input yacht output system. And here's a little side note. If you want to reset the settings or even remove the password, in the old days disconnecting this battery was the way to do it. However, in new laptops, that's not necessarily possible anymore. However, if you need to do this, try disconnecting it, but not just for 5 minutes. Leave it for an hour or two. 
But okay, let's get back to the point. I noticed that the whole thing seems to be loose and moves around, which suggests to me the cause of such high temperatures, but okay, let's take it step by step. So I'm unscrewing the right fan. It's held in place a bit by the cover, under which there's the wireless network card and the main M2 port. You can unscrew it, although I figured that since it's so springy, you can take the whole thing out without doing that. In the next step, we should loosen the six screws that press the heatsink along with the heat pipes to the processor and the graphics chip. You should do this in the reverse order of the numbering, but as I started looking at them, they seem to be sticking out a bit too much, don't they? I can feel under my finger that they're pressing in just a little bit on their springs. I take a screwdriver, turn it two turns to the left, and now it's super light. I tried screwing it in and it turned five times with no resistance. How is that possible? It looks like the sixth screw wasn't screwed in at all. I check the fourth one and it also turns with no resistance. I zoom in to get a better look at what's going on here. And sure enough, all of them, one after another, just aren't screwed in. Oh, the person assembling this device must have really had their head in the clouds that day, that's for sure. Everyone makes mistakes, but where's the quality control? Did it take a break or does it not exist? Such a screw-up looks really, really bad. If it weren't for the owner's common sense, who immediately stopped using the laptop, another motherboard with the processor and graphics chip would have been fried. The bigger the corporation, the bigger the mess, but let's move on. Now you need to lift the heatsink and you have to be very careful here. First, find the right spot to get a grip, either with your finger or a plastic spatula, remembering that thermal paste can stick really hard, then dry out and its thermal pads also bond the surfaces quite well. Here, however, nothing got stuck, nothing got glued, because it was never pressed down. But remember, in your case it might really get stuck, so don't force it or you'll bend the heat pipes. Copper is highly malleable. Instead, try making minimal, even half millimeter turns and shifts. This way, you should be able to break the surface bonds and cause the dried thermal paste to crack. Too much turning will damage the thermal pads, so here my friends be gentle. And what do we have here? There's paste, there are thermal pads, but on the surface of the graphics chip we have undeniable evidence of sloppy work that happened at the Lenovo service center. If the screws had been tightened, the thermal paste would have been nicely spread over the entire surface of the GPU core. And as we can see, only about half is covered, even though I pressed it down myself with my finger. I tightened it a few turns with the screwdriver, but it still turned out like this. The processor is almost completely covered, but that's only because they didn't skimp on the paste and someone squeezed out a lot of it, which doesn't change the fact that a lack of pressure is still a lack of pressure and the heat transfer was almost non-existent. The owner asked me to leave the original thermal pads and since their condition looks perfectly fine, they seem moist and flexible, I'm of course leaving them. Even if you tear one of them slightly, it's not a big deal and you can use them again, of course as long as they don't overlap each other. If your thermal pads are already in a critical condition, then replacing them might definitely be necessary. Measure them with a caliper, check on forms and buy good quality pads of the right thickness. You can actually see here that in the upper part they are a bit compressed. The lower ones haven't had proper contact yet because you can hardly find any deformations on them. Well, after all, the entire cooling system was held in place only by those screws from the fans. Yes, I repeat, after Lenovo's service, the entire cooling system was held in place by those two side fans. And while you're at it, if yours are really dusty, this is the perfect time to clean them. You can use compressed air for this, a brush, and here for plastic, it doesn't have to be anti-static. A vacuum cleaner will also work, but be very careful with it, and remember to hold the fan in place with your finger, so it doesn't spin up too fast, because that could damage it. Now it's time to clean the surface of both processors, as well as the heat spreader. For this, I'll use isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Under no circumstances should you use tissues or toilet paper. They are too soft and delicate. Apparently, a product called KT5 works even better at removing old thermal paste. I'll leave a purchase link in the description for those interested. Also remember that the silicon core is delicate, and if you catch its edge, you can easily break it, so make your movements more from the center outward. The downside of this technique is that some of the old paste will be pulled outside the core, but first it doesn't cause any harm, and second, a cotton swab soaked in isopropyl alcohol or the mentioned KT5 will help you clean those edges. 
So here I am cleaning the surface, but I forgot to mention where the RAM is located. That's why I'll quickly mention that it's right under this black cover. When it comes to choosing thermal paste, we won't waste time on old methods, because others have already tested them, and they didn't really work in this model. That's why I'll use something here that's been around in the manufacturing industry for a long time, and has only recently become popular among computer enthusiasts. Of course, I'm talking about the Face Change Thermal Interface Material, Honeywell Face Change Thermal Material 7950. In this video, I won't be going on about it, because I've already talked about its physical properties, effectiveness, and everything else when I switched from regular thermal paste to this marvel in the video about the RTX 4070 Ti. After watching this, you should definitely check out that video. Even if you're only interested in the laptop topic, there's a lot of knowledge in that video that will help you here as well. I'll leave the link at the end and in the description so you can check it out later, but that's for later. Now we place the cut pieces on the graphics chip and the processor. We try not to leave any fingerprints on this phase change material, that's why I'm using latex gloves. Don't forget to also remove the protective film from the side where the heat sink will go. Notice that I put a piece of plastic under my right hand which allowed me to rest it securely on the motherboard. I could have also kept my gloves on but okay, hindsight is 2020. In the next step we carefully lower the cleaned heat spreader with heat pipes aiming as precisely as possible so that it fits into the screw holes. Lifting it later or pushing it around can damage or even smear the thermal paste or in this case the phase change material which would be highly inadvisable. We gently catch the screws and tighten them gradually one after another following the numbering. We also screw in the fence and any covers that were removed. Now throw away all the screws you removed and don't remember where they came from. Just kidding, you have to remember which screw was for what, but definitely don't forget to connect the fans and the battery. Turn on the computer without the power supply for now and watch or even listen to how the fans work and don't freak out if they don't spin at all while the system is loading. If the temperature is low, which is what we wanted in the first place, they might stay still. Before you start any game or stress test, make sure that nothing on the desktop itself raises your concerns and that the temperatures stay within reasonable values. The manufacturer's software will help you with this, or even better, the HHWINFO program. If you don't see anything concerning, then connect the original power supply and launch any game. Mute the sound and listen to the fans working. Place your hand near the vents on the left side and check if the air blown out by the fan is warm or even hot. If so, that's a very good sign. If the air is rather cool and the fan is running at high speed, it may mean that there is not enough proper heat transferred between the system, or possibly between the two of them, and the heat sink. There can be many reasons for such a situation, but if you replaced the pads, maybe their thickness was incorrect, or maybe one of them got bent and is now creating a gap. It all depends on how high the temperatures are and which component is affected. Also remember that for phase change thermal material 7950 to reach its full performance it needs to be properly warmed up, which of course requires a bit of time and temperature. But you'll learn everything about it from the next video I recommend. In this case everything looks okay, so I'll leave it like this for about 15 minutes, keeping an eye on it. The maximum GPU temperature barely exceeded 68.8 degrees. With the hotspot being 4 degrees warmer, I couldn't be happier either. The average temperatures from the entire 15 minute test ended up at 62 degrees and 65.8 degrees for the hotspot. Simply beautiful. However, I read that in this model, the 3060 should reach up to 140 watts. I got the computer with a fresh operating system, so to unlock its full potential, I changed the power profile in the pre-installed manufacturer software. I installed GeForce Experience, restarted the machine, and suddenly this supposedly modest little laptop turned into a beast, consuming 140 watts just on the graphics card. And let me remind you, this is an RTX 3060 whose total graphics power according to NVIDIA specifications should be between 60 and 115 watts. For the cooling system in any laptop, that's a huge amount of energy to dissipate and the Legion 5 is, as you can see, a rather thin and compact design. When the load was at 80 watts, the fans were barely whispering, about as loud as my refrigerator, but now you can definitely hear them. 
It's true that before the operation, even on the desktop, they were definitely louder than they are now at these 140 watts. But still, the overall noise level of the device and reaching the cooling system's limit is now noticeable. After 15 minutes of testing, the temperatures settled at an average of 75 degrees and just under 80 degrees for the hotspot. Interestingly, the average total graphics power during this period stayed a bit above 139 watts, which proves that even with this power profile, there was no GPU throttling, so once again, it's a complete success. You can also stress the processor using the same tool, but after clicking Central Processing Unit Burner, enter a value that's half of what appears there. This way, you'll only stress half the course and can monitor temperatures accordingly. If everything is okay, then stop and try increasing that value. Observe, and finally run the test on all threads, again watching the power consumption. But be careful, because the computer's responsiveness drops significantly at that point, and as a result, temperature updates happen with a considerable delay so it's worth keeping that in mind. After finishing the 15-minute test, the average temperature came out to 83 degrees Celsius at an 86-watt thermal design power, which is absolutely incredible for such a thin laptop, especially since when it's lying on a desk, access to fresh air is quite limited. But you probably don't know that these kinds of stands not only improve your comfort when working with a laptop, but also allow the fans to have freer access to fresh air, which can noticeably lower the temperatures. The video along with the tests will appear on the channel in some time, so it's worth subscribing. I'm very satisfied with the result of my work, but before you start looking for a phase change Honeywell for your laptop, be sure to watch the video that just appeared in the top right corner of your screen. By the way, you can find this and all my other videos at www.techmaniacshd.pl. See you next time.